Hi everyone, uh, thanks for checking out this video. Um, so this video is gonna be a uh, demonstration of how to write the MATLAB code to simulate the predator prey model. Um, so, and I've already made, um, I made one video previously just about this model itself, kind of walking you guys through uh, the equations of it for the ODEs. And I made another video about how to write the simulation for this model in Python. And then um, I was thinking that like for every Python video I make, I would like to, for as many as I can, like also make a MATLAB version, just because I know like in um, in college, especially and in a lot of like academic environments, people use uh, MATLAB to do a lot of this stuff. So I'm just thinking like for this one to uh, the predator prey model, since it's like a common uh, common uh, model that people use, I'll, I'll just make a, a MATLAB version for it in case someone's using MATLAB. Um, so if you guys haven't watched my previous video um, explaining the model, um, I'll put a link to that in the description, but also just like quickly review the model here too. So we have two equations. We have an equation for um, the level of our prey population. So that will be um, just called X here. And then we have uh, Y as the level of our predator population. And we can think of these as being like any kind of like predator prey um, animals. So maybe we can think of the prey as being fish and the predators as being bears, for example. That's I think that was the example I used in my uh, video explaining the model. And then, so for the prey, um, we have a growth term and a, uh, a uh, degradation term. So the, the growth term, the growth of the population is, um, it's defined by this uh, parameter alpha. So it's just alpha times whatever the current level of the population is, because they kind of, the, the more population there is, the more they're gonna be reproducing and the, it'll be like kind of, uh, the growth term is like an exponential growth term if we don't consider the uh, decay of the population. But then the um, the loss term of the population, the degradation term, um, it's, so the first part of it is just like this parameter beta times the current level of the, the uh, prey population. But then the, the degradation term also depends on the level of the predator population because part of what's killing off the prey is they're being eaten by the predators. So this, uh, this um, negative term here also depends on the current level of Y, the current level of the predator population. And then so for the predator population, their, their growth term here depends on this parameter delta. And it also depends on um, the current level of the prey population because for the predator population to be growing, they need to be getting something to eat. So they need to be able to eat the prey population. So that's why uh, the, the growth term for the predator population also depends on uh, the level of X, which is the level of the prey. And then we have some um, some decay term for our predator population, which is gonna be gamma times uh, gamma times Y, which is gamma times the current level of the predator population. Um, okay, so that's kind of like a quick review. So now let's get into the uh, MATLAB code. So just like usual, we're just gonna start off by um, close all, clear all, uh, CLC, just like clearing our, um, our workspace. And then we can start, um, so we're gonna go a little bit like, the order of this is gonna be a little bit weird, but you guys are gonna see what I mean in a second, but we're, we're gonna start writing our, our function for the ODE. But the ODE function has, actually has to be kept at uh, the bottom of the file. So we're gonna write this function first, but then we're gonna put it at the bottom of the script and then everything else will be um, coming before that. Um, okay, so let's just get started. Um, function dy equals, let's just call this my ODE. I mean, you guys can call it whatever you want, but I'll just call it for now my ODE. Then it's gonna take um, arguments t, which is gonna be some time span, y, and um, a params array. So just something I want to make clear, the reason I'm calling the output here y and um, the input here y, th this y, it, it's not gonna be the same as this y. Like this y here is a convention for just what we're calling the whole system. So this this y is actually gonna be um, a matrix that's gonna include both um, both of these, like both, both uh, equations, both um, initial conditions. So I'm sorry for the confusion, but I'm just keeping it, I'm calling it Y here just because that's the convention for what we call the output of uh, the whole system. Um, but, but so this Y in our MATLAB code is actually gonna be an equation. I mean, sorry, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a matrix that includes um, the levels of, of both uh, predator and prey. And I'll, I'll call these, um, even though they're lowercase here, I'll call these in the code uppercase X and uppercase Y. 
and then this lowercase y will just be um, by convention that's what's used as like the output of the uh, ODE. Um, so this will be like a, a matrix containing the levels of both um, uppercase x and uppercase y at like every every uh, time point. So sorry if that caused any confusion. Just I'm just keeping uh, you know keeping with the uh, convention of how of how ODEs are like called in uh, in MATLAB. It's kind of a convention, I guess. I'm going to end this here. And okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to, um, I guess I'll just write up here just to, so we can keep track of things. We're going to um, define some variables we're going to use first, like out of the function, and then we'll define them locally within the function. So um, custom uh, variable alpha, uh, this will be, yeah, I'm actually just getting these like right from Wikipedia. So this, uh, this will be call alpha 1.1, but again, you guys can like change these around, make them whatever you want to try out uh, different variables and stuff. Uh, beta will be 0 0.4 for now, delta 0 0.1, and gamma 0 0.4. And yeah, I'm just taking these from Wikipedia just because I know these are some good values. That I also use this, these in the, my Python video too. But if there's some good like values, it'll make it um, it'll make it isolate really well, so we can like see uh, kind of the interesting kind of output we want. And then we're gonna put all these things in a uh, params array. Um, so say like alpha, beta, delta, and gamma. And so you guys could have just put these numbers like directly in this params array, but I'm just running it like this to make it like easier on the eyes and like easier to keep track of things. But like you could have just put these numbers right in here and it would have been fine. But I'm just running it like this to make it easier to follow. Um, okay. So when we have these defined like outside of the, um, outside of our function, we're going to like redefine them locally within the function. And the reason we're doing this, like it might seem like kind of like a hassle now is we're just doing this just because if you guys were to do like more complicated things, like maybe running the simulation a bunch of times with like different predefined parameter values, it'll be easier for you to do it like this. So this might seem like unnecessarily complicated if we, if we do it, um, the way I'm doing it here seems like an unnecessary complication. But if you guys are doing like more complex kinds of simulations, um, just running a bunch of different simulations with different parameter values, then it'll make sense to actually do it like this. That's why I'm show, showing you guys how to like pass in uh, parameter arrays just for the future if you're doing like more complicated stuff and this will be uh, easier. So we're just gonna, um, we're passing in this params array here. And so we're just gonna redefine all these, um, all these params locally within our function uh, just by, by using this params array that we're passing in. Um, so again, this will, if you guys are doing like more complicated stuff, um, this will actually turn out to be kind of easy, like make it easier on you guys. So we're just passing this, uh, params array with all of our, um, params values and just redefining them all locally here. So that's the first thing we do in our function. And then, um, also, so we're going to define our uppercase X and uppercase Y values. So this is going to be upper, uppercase X is going to be lowercase Y. Remember lowercase Y is a matrix. I'm just calling it like that because that's kind of the convention of how we talk about um, ODE simulations in MATLAB. Um, same in Python really, just calling it like lowercase Y. That's uh, the matrix of our, um, of our values. But uppercase X is going to be the level of the prey. And we're just calling that like the first, the first value of our, um, of our lowercase Y matrix right now. And then uppercase Y, our predators, uh, predators level, is going to be um, the second uh, second value in there. And these these are this is going to be like a matrix that has like two columns, um, and just filling up the rows of the matrix with our uh, predator and prey values at each uh, time point. You guys will see in a second when we get the output. And then um, okay, so then uh, dy. Um, now we're going to actually write down our ODEs. So dy, you guys could also call this like dy dt, but for now I'm just you know calling it uh, dy to make it a little bit easier, I guess. Um, we're just going to make uh, make some zeros zeros here. Um, let's call it like that. And then so now we're going to say um, dy one. This is going to be our um, first ODE, which is actually again sorry about the confusion with. Uh, you know, kind of using lowercase y here and then calling lowercase y something else in a simulation. But we're just gonna call these here like uppercase x and uppercase y. And then so dy, the first one is gonna be our first ODE here. So we're just gonna say alpha 
times x, so alpha times our level of the prey, minus beta times x times y. And that's gonna be our first ODE. And then um, second ODE is gonna be the second uh, second row in this uh, this dy um, this dy array here. Um, so this is gonna be delta times x times y. Or for the first term, minus gamma times uh, uppercase y. And so in Python, we would have like a return statement at the bottom of this function, but in MATLAB, it knows we're returning this dy array here because we, we set up here that that's what we're gonna be returning. So we actually don't need any return statement in MATLAB, just uh, it already knows that we're pulling out the uh, dy array here. And then this dy array is gonna have um, both, of our, both of our ODEs in it. And then so we're basically gonna be like feeding this um, function into our uh, ODE solver. And it's going to evaluate these ODEs at a bunch of like predefined uh, time points that we're going to tell it that we want the solutions for. Um, you guys will see in a second. But so MATLAB's kind of like weird about this because we're actually going to need to keep this function at the bottom of our script. So everything else we put in, we need to kind of like make room for it because this function is going to stay at the bottom. Otherwise, it's going to uh, like not let us do it. Um, but okay. So we've already we've already defined our um, parameter values and made this params array here that we're going to pass into the um, ODE solver. And next we want to have our initial conditions. So call this um, y zero. Just, that's just another convention um, for what we call our initial conditions in uh, in like MATLAB and Python for ODE solvers. Uh, so we'll just call this um, just make an array. Start start with ten of the prey and start with one of the predators. And you guys can think of this as maybe being like units in like the hundreds or thousands or something. Can like, uh, I mean, I'm not like, I'm not like an uh, ecologist or something. So I don't really know what to even use for what would even be like an appropriate unit. I'm just kind of like showing you guys how it'd be done um, in terms of the code. But yeah, you can call this like uh, maybe units in like the hundreds or thousands or something of the animal numbers. And then, so next we want to um, define our time span. Just call that, uh, sorry, T span. Um, make that from zero to 50. Again, this can be any unit you guys want, maybe like years, maybe like months or something. Um, I'm not really even sure, like since I'm not like an animal biologist, I don't really know like what unit is even appropriate to use. But yeah, just uh, you guys can make that, like think about that, whatever unit you want it to be. And now, so here's the most important line. This is when we're gonna be actually calling the ODE solver. So first we're gonna talk about how we want the output. So we're gonna be getting our output as uh, we want to get the time points and we want to get this Y output matrix that will have the values for both our predators and our prey. Um, I'm going to say, so uh, this equals, and then we're going to call ODE 45, which is one of the um, like ODE solvers in, in MATLAB. And then, so this part syntax is kind of weird, but we're going to say at symbol parentheses T comma y close parentheses and then my ODE whatever whatever you guys called your function I just called mine my ODE whatever the name of the ODE function is and then another parentheses again I know weird syntax but just uh, trust me on this one <laughs> um, and then t comma y comma params our params array close parentheses comma T span, sorry, I keep putting a D there, I don't know why. Just, yeah, T span, and then Y zero, our initial condition array. And then finally, um, our last closed parentheses to close this out, and semicolon, of course. Um, okay, so yeah, kind of weird syntax there, but guys, just like, trust me on the syntax. Um, that's what you need to do to be able to pass in your params array and also pass in uh, the time span you want solved and the initial conditions. That's just kind of how you have to write it. And this is going to give us output our like our array of time points and our uh, matrix with the levels of uh, like th this y output is going to have a column like the first column is going to be um, the solutions for this uh, this x this like prey equation and the second column is going to have solutions for our predators equation which we called y here but but it's not really called um, y in the code because y is just uh, the name for the whole the whole matrix. Um, okay, so now let's like plot some of these results. 
So let's say subplot. Um, so we want two subplots, um, and then one, one. Okay. And um, semicolon, and then plot uh, time points, and then our matrix. We want all of the rows for the first column. That's how we write that. Um, so time points, and then all of the rows for the first column of the matrix. That'll be our um, prey, our prey levels. And then so x label um, time, y label prey. Okay. And then I'm just going to um, copy all of this for our second plot. Um, just make it make it our second subplot. And then the second column, that's going to give us our levels of our predators. Uh, so we want just uh, the matrix, second column, all of the rows, and then all of the time points in our time point array. And then label this predators. Um, okay, so let's try running this, and uh, hopefully it'll give us the right result. And just remember, everything we just wrote is coming before our actual um, function. Like the function in MATLAB has to be at the end, so just keep that in mind. But yeah, so let's just uh, give this a try. And yeah, so it looks like we got the right output. So it's oscillating like the system's uh, kind of supposed to oscillate if you have the right parameters for it. Because um, as the level of prey is increasing, that means the level of the predators is also going to be increasing. But then as we get more predators, they start eating the prey like more. So the prey starts going down because they're all getting eaten by predators. But then if the predators um, can't get enough to eat, their population is going to start also dropping. And then if the predator's population is dropping, then the prey... Uh, can survive more because they're not getting eaten as much. So then they start going up, and then predators also are getting enough to eat, so they they start to rising again. And that kind of oscillates like that. That's kind of the idea of the predator prey model is uh, for the right parameter sets, you can get these like interesting oscillations in the system. Um, okay, so that's it for this video. Uh, like usual, I'm going to put the code up on my GitHub, and I'll link to the GitHub uh, in the description. Um, if you guys have any questions, just let me know in the comments. Um, but yeah, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, see you next time.